Well, we got cut off on B, so I decided to start from scratch because I was watching the clock and getting all nervous. We weren't going to get done, and I rushed. So I'm going to start from scratch. So on B, it says write an equation. The minute it says write an equation, the first thing you should write is y equals mx plus b because that is how we write an equation. And so then we just go down the line and fill in everything we know. So it says account A, and I told you that's always the Y when it's capitalized, with respect to N. So that must be the X. So in place of Y, we can put A with respect to N using our function notation. So this is our y, and remember our x always goes in parentheses. So then we look and say, okay, m is slope. And we learned this on lesson one. We also learned it in module six. So y equals mx plus b, m is a slope. And do you remember b is the y-intercept? So let's just write that here, just little reminders. y-intercept is zero b. And remember, the y-intercept is the starting point. And then m we can mark as a slope or rate of change. Okay, so now let's fill in. So m we found right up here. So the rate of change, because remember, m and rate of change are the same thing. So we put negative 20 in place of m. X, we look right here and we can see this is our X. So we write in so whatever's in parentheses is our X and it's always going to be the lowercase letter. So that's in plus what was our starting place? What did his bank account start at? Look up here. At zero weeks, that means at the beginning, his bank account was 500. So our starting place is $500. So that is our equation. A of n, I'm just writing a little neater, equals negative 20 n plus 500. So one thing I know, notice students do wrong on this, I'll slide it up because I see them at the bottom. One thing I notice students do wrong on this is they don't make these match. This is your X. Whatever's in place. So Y equals M X. So in place of X, I put the N. So these two letters must always match. Whatever you're telling the reader is X must be the same letter that you use for X. And again, that's your slope, which we learned about in the last module. And B from the cell phone problem, remember that, is always a starting place. What was the starting fee of the cell phone? $6 a month down payment or $10 a month base fee. Well, this one, the starting from the table we saw was 500. So that is our equation for B. And that's one of our biggest competencies in this module is being able to write an equation. So this is one of our first times practicing and we're going to have a lot more, but it's all going to be set up the same way. The minute you read, write an equation, you immediately write this. And then you just start filling in from what's given all the different values. So the capital letter is always Y. The lowercase letter is going to be your N. So A of N. That means the problem's written with respect to n. Slope we found. We said our x was n and the starting point. There we go. So now we did a good job with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn to page 5. Like I said, you'll get a lot more practice with that. So. Okay. So on page 5... We have a parked car. 
So think about the things you know about parked cars and rate of change. So rate of change is how fast they are going, how fast they are moving, miles per hour. So a parked car, how fast is it going? So what do you think the rate of change is going to be? It's not going, right? It's going to be zero. Zero rate of change because it's parked. It's not moving. Rate of change means how is it changing? It's not because it's parked. So Asante drives to the MCC main campus for his 8 a.m. math class every day. He likes to get his favorite spot, which is exactly five miles from his home, or get to his favorite spot at 7 a.m. So he drives five miles, parks at 7 a.m., his class is at 8 a.m. Then, just like you guys, he sits in his car reviewing his notes to get ready for class. I bet you guys do that every day, right? <laughs> Complete the table below of his car's distance from his house. So think about this. His car's distance from his house. So it said his house was five miles away. So time from 7 a.m. So this means zero minutes after 7 a.m. Otherwise, 7 a.m. So at 7 a.m., how far is he away from his house? Five miles, right? Because it says he parks in his favorite spot at 7 a.m. and it's five miles from home. Okay, at 7.05, he's sitting in his car. How far is he away from his house? Five miles. At 7.10, he's still sitting in his car reviewing his notes. How far is he from his house? Five miles. See how the rate of change is zero? We're not changing, are we? That's what rate of change zero looks like. These values do not change. Because it's the change in y over the change in x. So it doesn't matter that the x's are changing. His distance from home is not changing. That's how we know that the rate of change is going to be zero. We're going to find it algebraically too, but because he's not getting further and further from his house, we know that he's not moving because he's parked. So his rate of change or slope or speed is zero. So 15 minutes, still five miles from his house, 20 minutes, still in his car, 25 minutes, still in his car, 30 minutes, still in his car, 35 minutes, still in his car, five miles from home, 40 minutes, and maybe at 40 minutes he starts walking to class or something. So he sits in his car this whole time reviewing his notes and he remains five miles from home. Sketch the graph of this data. So first off we have to label the x and y axis. So I'm going to make this smaller so we can see everything. So the x-axis, remember this is your x, this is your y, your x-axis should be labeled time from 7 a.m. So, and it's in minutes. So let's write time from 7 a.m. And this time is measured in minutes. Remember, we always need our um, units as well. So what's the y? We look up here and we say distance from home and this is in miles. So let's turn our graph distance from home and this would be in miles. I'll put miles right here. I don't know why they gave us such a little teeny graph like this. So my x-axis is labeled. My y-axis is labeled. I have the units on both. Now I have to decide the label for each line. So it looks like here's your 0. This will be 5. This is ridiculous, huh? This will be 10, 15, 20, 25. I promise I will not give you this little of a graph on the table. 
So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So this is 35, and then 40 is the last one. So super, super, super teeny. So we're going by fives down here, and we were consistent. Every interval is worth five. The distance was five, so we could go by one, one, two, three, four, five. So let's just put a five up there. You can write your one, two, three, four, two if you want. So now in a different color, let's label those points. So this goes with the point zero, five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. And five goes with five. And 10 goes with five. And 15 goes with five. And 20 and 25 and 30 and 35 and 40. So they all go with five. So let's think about this. We learned in module six that the slope of a horizontal line, we can ski on it, but it's zero fun. So does that make sense? The slope is zero and the rate of change is zero too because it's not changing. So it all makes sense. And remember how I said before you draw a line, you always have to ask yourself, could I have fractions and decimals here? Where will I be at 1.2 minutes? Where will I be at 2.3 minutes? Where will I be at 10.7 minutes? So time could be decimals, right? I mean, they listed them in fives here, but it would make sense to ask, how far are you from home after 1.7 minutes? You're still five miles. How far are you from home after 15.3 minutes? Still five miles. So that tells me because these can be fractions that this is continuous and it needs to be a solid line. So that's the first decision you have to make. Is it solid or dotted? This one would be solid because there's a lot other times in between the dots we've made. Second, we have to decide, is there going to be two arrows? Is there going to be one arrow? Are we just going to connect the two points? And since we don't really, this is kind of a tough one because his car is going to sit there because this is the distance of his car from home. So it will be there after 40 minutes. So we could draw an arrow showing yes it's going to be there after 40 minutes but we can't draw an arrow this way because that would be five minutes before seven he wasn't five miles from home five min ten minutes before seven he wasn't five miles from home so we have to stop the line there and just an arrow going this way it would probably also be appropriate just to graph this without the arrow but really in reality, his car is going to stay there while he's in class, so it's going to be five miles from home longer than 40 minutes because he'll be in class. So that is my graph, and this is zero slope we learned in module six. Remember, we can ski on it, but it's zero fun. When it's vertical, we can't ski, so there's undefined slope but horizontal means we're not changing we're staying the same staying the same staying the same five miles from home so it's zero because we're not moving so now it's asking us to describe the rate at which the distance from his house is changing so what do you think the rate of change would be same as slope, right? Zero, because it said rate. That's how we need, knew to write rate of change. Now we have to label it. And remember, it's always labeled y per x. So miles per minute. So zero miles per minute and that's because his car is parked and not moving
So that means he's going 